Hi there, my name is Dimitris Karlabidis and in this video we'll talk, I'll show you one way of solving a limit of a rational function, specifically in the case in which the substitution leads in the indeterminate form of 0 over 0. So let's begin by quickly writing the title. It should be on calculating limit of a rational function when we have the 0 over 0. Given the limit when x tends to x0 of f of x over g of x, of course, we all know, or at least we should have known, that the first thing that we do when we try to calculate the limit is to actually take the tending value, the x0, substitute it in, instead of x and see what comes up under this substitution. If we get something which is regular, uh, any non-anomaly, we are fine. But if, however, given this limit, if the substitution, the substitution of x0 instead of x leads to the indeterminate form of 0 over 0, then perhaps, and perhaps is critical here because what we will discuss is not something that can be uh, applied in any, any case, okay? But this is a way to approach things. Then perhaps the solution can be found by following the steps below. First of all, factorizing separately numerator and denominator so that we can create in both of them the expression x minus x0 eliminate then that eliminate x minus x0 from both and then re-substituting again. So, once again, if the substitution leads to 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form, then we should hopefully do the next steps. We should take numerator and denominator and factorize them separately, hoping that in each one of these factorized forms, we will create the expression x minus x0. And why do we need these expressions in both? Because we want to eliminate them and then move on regularly by substituting again. We will work, of course, some examples. Let's see. Example number one. We want to calculate the limit when x tends to 3 of 3 x minus 9 over 6x minus 18. Of course, like I told you before, that the first thing is to substitute. So we would go in a corner and we would write that for x equals 3, uh, we get 3 times 3 minus 9 over 6 times 3 minus 18, which is 0 over 0. Uh, it cannot be solved. So let's take the numerator separately, 3x minus 9. And since we know that problem appears when x tends to 3, we hope that these factorizations will produce x minus 3. Indeed, 3x minus 9 can be written as 3 times x minus 3. And 6x minus 8 can also be written as 6 times x minus 3 which means that I will now continue 
by writing these equivalent expressions instead of numerator and denominator. X minus three, sorry, that was minus three here. Then this will be canceled out. The X minus threes are canceled out. And I continue with the limit when X tends to three of three over six, which of course is equal to three over six, which is equal to one half. Let's see a second example. Example number two. Let's calculate this time the limit when x tends to 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Once again, our first or ever approach are always would be to substitute. For x equals 2, we do see, however, that the x squared minus 4 over x minus 2 turns into 0 over 0. This means that since the problem appears when x tends to 2, we hope that factorizing numerator and denominator separately will produce in any of them, in both of them, uh, x minus 2. x squared minus 4 is the same as x squared minus 2 squared, which is the difference of squares, which is equal to x minus 2 times x plus 2. Instead of the denominator, we don't have to do anything else because we have actually already the, the thing we were hoping for. Now, all that is left is for me to go and rewrite the given rational function, this time, however, with its equivalent expressions. Instead of x squared minus 4, I should have it written as x minus 2 times x plus 2 over x minus 2. This will be cancelled out, so I can simply continue with the x plus 2, which now I will resubstitute. 2 plus 2 equals 4. Let's see a third and last example. Limit when x tends to 2 of x squared plus 3x minus 10 over x squared minus 4. Once again, my first always action is to substitute. So I would have said that for x equals 2, the x squared plus 3x minus 10 over x squared minus 4 becomes 2 squared, 3 times 2 minus 10 over 2 squared minus 4, which is the same as 4 plus 6 minus 10 over 4 minus 4, which is an indeterminate form of 0 over 0. It's okay. We know from the suggested methodology that we should now take since the problem appears when x tends to 2, we hope, we wish, you name that, to create the x minus 2. To do so, we will take numerator separately and we should factorize that. Here, remember that this is a quadratic. The quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c in its factorized form can be expressed as a times x minus x1 times x minus x2, where x1 and x2 are its roots. So what we would do here would be take the discriminant 9 minus 4 times 1 times negative 10, which is 49. x1 comma 2 is negative b plus minus root of the discriminant over 2 times 1, negative 3 plus minus 7 over 2. I break it down. So it should be 4 over 2 equals 2, negative 7 over 2, negative 10 over 2 equals negative 5. 
which means that the factorized expression of that is 1 times x minus 2, x minus minus 5, so it turns into x plus 5. But look that things seem to be going well because I was hoping for x minus 2. I have already found x minus 2. If I now factorize the denominator and somehow I manage to find x minus 2 again, this means that I'm on the right direction. x squared minus 4, we've seen the same exact expression before, is the same as that, which is, of course, the difference of squares, which means that we can now go back to the original expression and rewrite it, this time with equivalent forms. Instead of x squared plus 3x minus 10, I can simply write that as 1, I can skip 1, x minus 2 times x plus 5 over x minus 2 multiplied by x plus 2. These x's will be cancelled out, x minus 2, x minus 2, and we can continue with the rest. Limit of x tending to 2, x plus 5 over x plus 2, and now we can try to substitute again. 2 plus 5 over 2 plus 2 equals 7 over 4. And that would be, remember that this is just one way to approach such a limit. It's not uh, certain that it will solve all cases. Okay, but it's just a way to act. What is it? We substitute. If we end up in the 0 over 0 indeterminate form, we factorize numerator and denominator separately, hoping to get x minus x0, since the problem started to appear when x tends to x0. Once we have x minus x0 in both of them, we eliminate these expressions and then we resubstitute. That was all. Hope I made it clear. In case you have any question, uh, feel free to, to leave it as a comment below the video. As always, thank you for your time.